A beautiful morning to you. Thank you for joining us on PLOS TV Africa. This is Off the Press. We bring you all the latest headlines in our newspaper review so you can make a sense of it with the help of a specialist, of course. Uh, I'm joined by Tubosu Akeju, a reputation manager. Very glad to have you join us. Good morning. Thanks for having me. All right. Uh, we have some papers here. So we'll just start with the Vanguard this morning. Um, the screamer here is why stable power supply will remain a mirage. That's report. Uh, details of that is on page five of the paper. That's it on your screen. There's a couple of riders. As far as sector lose, losses hit 332.4 billion naira. Lack of liquidity, inadequate investment, others buy it harder. Uh, these are some of the writers. And then let's take this one from Fashola. It says Nigeria needs 10 trillion Naira infrastructure bond. That's part <laughs> of the problem we have with the power sector. Uh, it was a smiling. But let's just run through the headlines and then we'll get to your thoughts. Uh, courts to rule on Elza Zaki's bail August 5 as Murik backs government. Now, we also have uh, something on Buhari's invitation of Shiites uh, to terrorism. Anglican Communion, reps blame insecurity on Buhari's leadership. Presidential Tribunal, we won't call any witnesses to defend the Tiku's petition. That's INEC. Hmm. Uh, tribunal directs Buhari to open defense today. That means that INEC has closed this case. No witnesses called. Uh, you find details of that story uh, on page 8. Uh, upper Park gridlock, known end in sight as LASMA police FRSC abandon road to miscreants. Okay, let's see what else is on the front page. Uh, Fanny Farah, Middle Bed, Pandev, others boycotts Abubakar's meeting with Miyeti Allah. Uh, 1966 coup, it's unfortunate we've refused to learn from history. That's at Debanjo speaking. Uh, something on uh, Zamfara State is also um, an investment and business basically on the front page. Uh, let's see what's on the back. Uh, the usual is uh, Vanguard Sports. We'll get to that with Udoka a little later. To boss you. Which of these? Uh, uh, let's just go to the screamer. <laughs> okay. Um, the power issue in Nigeria, I still think that um, we are not, uh, we're, still, we're still playing to the gallery about the power situation of the country. There is, uh, is a multi layered problem. And if we choose to, you know, at every point in time, you know, focus on one part of it and not fix and not have an holistic approach to it, then we will not be able to solve the problem in the power sector. So here we have talked about the liquidity issue, um, you know, and I think that one thing that is not very clear is also to talk about the fact that we have an infrastructure issue. Presently, we have the capacity to generate, but we don't have the capacity to distribute what we can generate properly uh, because the transmission um, infrastructure is a bit weak. I mean, last week, government signed an agreement with Siemens, which, you know, sounded a bit interesting. But some of the industry stakeholders that I've discussed this issue with still think that it won't work until we fix the pricing issue in the market because if you can't cover the costs of... Um, of, uh, if, you're, if you're going to cover the cost of production of a particular, you know, produce or product, and you always have to transfer the, the gap in the cost of production and cost of sale to someone else, it's not a sustainable approach, which is what is happening in the power sector. So you have infrastructure issue, you have liquidity issue, you have pricing issues. If you do not give an holistic approach, and then you have the metering issue that is also there because the discourse will come to you and say that, you know, uh, we're unable to, uh, there's power theft and all of that. We're unable to bill everybody for everything they are consuming. So it's, it's you know, it's, it's, it looks like an octopus. And if you don't, if we are not able to give an holistic approach to it and solve the problem, then we're not, we're not close to it. So yeah, maybe the screamer is right, but I just hope that we'll have the willpower and we'll be able to face this thing on because government is also trying to be careful not to uh, uh, put prices there that will hurt people. But we also have to think about the fact that do we really want to solve this problem? Everybody has come to say that power is a major problem in Nigeria. So we might have to actually bite the bullet. We've seen what has happened in the telecom sector. So maybe if we, we'll, I mean, when telecom first came into this country, we were paying per minute and SIM cards were as expensive as Now everything 000. has changed. So. Well, what about um, this um, boycotting of the former um, head of state? So I have mixed feelings about that boycott. Yeah, in mind. 
He says it's not a security summit. It's just, you know, a meeting of elders yes, to discuss yes, the yeah. situation. Which is, so uh, my, my, my question is, you've called uh, these groups together. It's not a security summit. Um, so is the meeting to douse the tension? This is what I believe. Because I've, I've, I have a position on this issue, the security issue, which has called for this meeting. We have a security issue and not a Fulani Edsman issue. It's a security issue that we have, you know. So it has to first be treated as a security issue. The other side of me also feels that the people who have constantly, you know, eaten up the polity with their choice of words are also the same people that didn't show up for this meeting. I don't think that is good enough because that's an opportunity for you to come to the table, sit in the room with the people you are constantly having media wars with, and then solve this problem and say, oh, we are one nation, or we have our differences. All of us on this other side, I, I mean the Mayati Allah, we're not criminals. There are some criminals among us, which is normal in every society. And then come, you know, as a joint force to say, this thing will affect anybody. You know, today, it's um, the um, the son of uh, the daughter of uh, the leader of Afen Ferry. Tomorrow it could be the son of someone you know of the well, leaders let, of Let me think the leaders of this group. We had the likes of uh, Edwin Clark in the mix, uh, deciding that they're not going to go for that meeting. These are men that elder statesmen who should know about the history and the importance of you know dialogue in situations like, especially where we are at now. So for them to decide not to be a part of that meeting. I, I, don't I, I think it's not good enough. I mean, if they, they were not going to attend the meeting, uh, I, I don't even see any reason why they should not at least attend the meeting. You can go to the meeting to disagree with whatever they say there. But for you to, you know, Abu Salam Abu Bakr is an elder statesman. So he's a fellow elder statesman calling another elder statesman to say, because these people, if you look at it, the, we only have what I would call like a civil respect for them. They don't hold political office or anything, you know. Yeah. So I think that the good of the country should have been put, you know, um, forward and prioritized against any personal differences that they might have on the issue. All right, let's see what's on the Nation newspaper. Abdul Salami, Akiyemi, others. Let's reduce tension. Uh, we have, uh, I think that's still on that um, meeting, meeting with yes. the former uh, head of state. Panel to screen Lagos would be commissioners. That's also on the front page. That's it on your screen, by the way. Uh, you're, you're also looking at how Boko Haram killed 68 mourners in Bornu. Uh, that story has been in the headline for a bit. Atiku, why INEC didn't call witnesses? Uh, Olui Bado, uh, High Chiefs and Rift. Bullets still in El Zagzaki's wives bodies that's uh, another one on the shiites uh, issue four children landlord injured as building collapses in lagos yet another one excited community fist on dead will there's a picture for you on the front page is that something we should be happy about or we should be worried about no, <laughs> I, don't I don't know we, we we celebrate almost I don't, I really don't know how to, I have missed reactions to this on the one hand. All right, let's see what's on the back page. The nation, comment and debate at home and abroad. At home abroad, that's uh, waiting for the next list. Abba Kiari, PMB's chief of staff. The picture is there, so you'll be wondering what is he doing there. Uh, you might want to go read it. That's him on your screen. Uh, hardball is also there. Lagos Wonder, national canvas. Cartoon Ripples is also there for you. Let's uh, hear your thoughts. Let's, let's deal with this picture. Um, it's, it's a shame that this happens every time. And um, the question I always ask is, how is, uh, again, I'm sorry to refer to our security apparatus structured. So how did something this big come to the shores of Nigeria and we do not have you know, the necessary authorities allotted to stop people from feasting on this. What if what killed this will is a disease that, you know, could cause an epidemic everywhere? Mm, and that's then you one see way to look at it. Everybody there. So I'm asking, where are the Coast Guards? You know, who are the people are in that community that are supposed to be at least be an instrument in or a, a, a tread in the fabric of our security apparatus that can allow people and say that 
XYZ has just happened at this location and then the necessary authority can come there and say everybody stay away you know it's not it's 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 not meat for everybody you don't even know you know what has happened you know so it, 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 you know there's a lot in my mind because in this our present age of bow terrorism and uh, where you can you know it's not by bullets or missiles anymore this can easily turn to an attack in, in, for, for any country um, so that, that that's where my own fear is even in. I mean these people are going to cut it and go and you know feast on it as meat but we have bigger danger you know yeah. uh, there's this thing that I mean Sarabeshala Fashala proposed new tax regime uh, 10 trillion naira bond uh, we also have uh, IMF CBN clash of multiple exchange rate uh, which of these would we want to take on? let me talk about the tax issue I, again I, I don't know you know we have a funny approach to things in our country um, Eric Beshola was talking about how the rich should pay more and all of that. I think at the stage we have, we've not, the tax net, we even need to expand the tax net before we talk about any type of tax reform. You know, um, um, Nigeria has gotten better in the last about two to three years. We used to be the seventh or ninth most difficult country to pay tax to. So if I was even willing to pay tax, the process is so difficult to do that. But I think we've gotten better. I think we've moved from maybe 181 to 150 something, which is significant. However, we need to move, you know, better where the tax net is, a, you know, able to attract, you know, to, to get more people before you consider any type, you know, of tax regime. So, I, I, I mean, I, I don't know why that's even a conversation an engineer should be having on the floor now. <laughs> so, I don't know how we got there. All right, let's see what the punch has this morning. I mean, Sarah screening, Senate OK's nominees today. PDP demands EFCC probe. That's uh, something for you. Uh, we also have lawmakers take voice vote as light. Two others appear. Ministers designate must be subjected to graft po probe. Uh, that's it on uh, your screen now. Um, Hajj Commission offers UTME top scorers free pilgrimage. That's a new one. And then PC refineries post losses in 13 months. Owner Assembly vows to reject a Karadoli loan request. Kidnapped Lafia hospital workers, others rescued, 41 uh, suspects nabbed. Security crisis worries Abdusalami Gambari warms once against breakup. Let's go to the top now. That's on your screen already. Um, INEC fails to call witnesses. Bukhari begins defense. Um, Lagos Ibado Road. Bega to re relax closure for Sela. RCCG convention. Uh, El Zagzaki absent. Court rules and bail August 5. Uh, those are some headlines for you. Delay. Equity owned or other pilgrims shot uh, Ilori Airport. Hmm, this one is interesting. Zamfara to employ ex-bandits to combat killings, kidnappings. Is that not reward for crime? Um, it was one way. They will say it's another type of amnesty still well, available. I mean, it's, um, if it's, it's one of the ways to, you know, also manage people that, like they say, are, have been exposed to a bit of war before they've handled guns, before they've killed people. Um, it sometimes it has its own psychological effect on them. So sometimes they usually try Use it as to, redemption. Yes, to like bring them back into the system and then give them a lot of monitoring and all of that. Uh, one headline that also got my attention there would be the rescue of the people that were kidnapped um, about a week ago in uh, Lagos Ibadan Express, really, the Lafayette Hospital workers and others. You know, it's um, very interesting to see that um, in about a week, they were able to, and when I read the story, it was funny because, you know, um, the officer in charge actually did say that, oh, they were grateful to the IGP for giving them helicopters that helped to smoke the areas after, a, after they had geolocated where they were keeping the kidnappers, uh, where the kidnappers were keeping their victims. And they even went on to say that they had they rescued, I think, four more people who were kidnapped but were not reported. So what that goes to say is that we actually have what it takes to be able to fix this problem. I think the willpower is what is sometimes not there. Or is it possible that the uh, 
infrastructure, the security infrastructure is inadequate or it's been stretched thin. Lots I'm of very, questions very, very it. happy yeah. that they were able to rescue uh, these people. And I hope that they will screen all these uh, forests and you know places to get rid of the hideouts of this criminal. All right, um, we have very limited time now, so I'll just do this day in security. There is anger in the land, says Abdus Salami. Uh, Oshiba and Joe, AFCFTA will transform Nigeria's economy, increase export by 8%. Uh, military kills 10 ISOP fighters. Lawan, Senate will confirm uh, Fashola, Amechi, Sirika, Malami, others today. Uh, those are some headlines for you. Screen Saraki, eight others to take remaining three candidates today. That's um, a picture on your screen as well. Brainstorming on the economy, the big names on the front page. And on the back of this day, we have how the Lawan Senate failed its first major test. Your quick thoughts in I'll a talk minute. About the AFCTA. Um, again, I think that just like I've said several times on this program, policy education and policy marketing is very, very important. If the Nigerian economy and the people in Nigeria are not properly educated about the AFC, CFTA, the African Continental Trade Agreement, we will not be able to take proper advantage of this agreement that also has its pros and cons because if people are not well educated about it then unfortunately we'll be at the losing end of that agreement. I want to say thank you very much uh, to us soon for coming thank on the program. Always a pleasure to have you. All right, we we'll go on a quick break, and when we come back, Udoka will be joining us for a review of the sports headlines. Glad you're still with us. Off the press is what it is. I'm joined by Udoka and Joker for Sports Headline. Thank you for joining Good us. Morning. Good morning. All right, we have complete sports. Now we'll take a look at the Vanguard Sports if we have enough time. Uh, on the front page of um, complete sports, we have Everton offer uh, Onyekuru for sale, failed to secure work permit for Nigerian. Mm. Uh, we also have Ihana Cho will take scoring uh, form to new season. Trailed with preseason progress, that's another one for you. Ronaldo honored with a Macca's Legend Award. Lord. That's uh, another one on the front page of the paper. Uh, Rel make 145 million euro offer for Pogba. I guess I'll just um, pause there so we can have more time to analyze some of these headlines. On the back of it, you will see a transfer center for all the latest transfer just to talk yeah. about quickly. Well, it's uh, majorly about the transfer market. We're heading into the new season for uh, the 2019-2020 season. And for um, Onyekuru, who is, has been offered for sale, he hasn't really had an impact at Everton since he made his move to Everton. Uh, he has taken lots of loan deals away from the club and he has failed to secure a work permit in England to enable him to play in England. That's why Everton wants to sell him off. And Kelechi Hianacho, who has been scoring endlessly in the preseason, uh, he hasn't done so well in the proper season for Leicester City. So let's see if he gets to bang in the goals for Leicester City when the season kicks off in a few weeks' time. And for Ronaldo, honored with the Marcas Award, uh, it's an award for legendary performances in Spain. And it's not just Ronaldo, the likes of Lionel Messi and Mohamed Ali have also gotten this award. And uh, um, it's for his good performance when he was at Real Madrid. He won about four Champions League trophies at Real Madrid and two La Liga titles and two Copa del Rey titles right there when he was in Spain before he made his move over to Juventus and as well uh, scored about four, 438 goals in 451 matches for Real Madrid. So I think it's a massive performance for Ronaldo getting that award and he thoroughly deserves to get the award. And the last one for Paul Pogba making that move to Real Madrid. Manchester United don't want to let Paul Pogba go, but it's a transfer season. Anything can happen. And this is big money, £845 million. Pounds. I'm sure Pogba might just take a walk from Manchester United. All right, uh, let's see what's on the back page of Vanguard Sports quickly. Uh, Raul wants Igalo back. Mm. 2022 World Cup qualifiers for Eagles draw by. Uh, details inside of the paper. You'll see all of it uh, mm -hmm. there for you. Um, we also have uh, CAF Champions League. Pillars stay back in Kaduna for Kotoko. Mm -hmm. uh, Ronaldo, I want to win sixth. 
Nowadays, it's always 6 UEFA um, Champions League title. But for Gennaro, he wants uh, Odione Gallo back. Odione Gallo has retired from playing for the Super Eagles. And uh, the same goes with um, Mikel Ubi and um, Victor Moses as well. But for Odione Gallo, if a man says he doesn't want to play any longer for the national team, I think we should let him be. We have players who can fill up that space. There's uh, Paul Onwachu. There's also Henry Onyekuru. And there's Her um, Kelechi Hianacho. So I think if these other young players players are given a chance, they would um, fill up that boot which uh, Johnny Gallo has left uh, open. I remember he was the highest goal scorer at the just concluded AFCON tournament in Egypt and during the qualifiers he was also the highest goal scorer. That's one of the reasons why Gunnar Roll wants him back in the Super Eagles team. But if he says he's done, he's done. Let him be. Okay, what about this uh, cap? Yeah, and sure. for Kano Pillars, after they won the ITO Cup against uh, their opponents, Nasara United, uh, they'll be staying back in Kaduna to play Kotoko. That's for the Champions League, and that'll be their first game. They'll be having the first leg advantage in that one, and hopefully they get it to pick a win. Uh, they will just need to pick a draw away from home to uh, Kotoko. And Ronaldo, again, he wants to win a sixth Champions League title. Let's see how that goes for him. And uh, other news here, I'm seeing uh, something about uh, Victor Moses, but I've not read that, that one yet. And uh, for, okay, Evra, Patrick Evra, he says yeah, nothing lasts forever. Evra, he retires from uh, football. football. He has been talking so much, played for the um, likes of uh, Marseille. He played for Manchester United, and he has given a good account of himself. And he retired at quite a young age. And I think there was a time he was um, banned from football for kicking an official, he said it was a flying kick. But yes, he has finally retired from uh, football, and he wants to get into coaching. Let's see where um, he coaching will, will take him. Exactly. All right, Doka, thank you very much for coming thank on the program. Always me. a pleasure to have you. And of course, thank you for watching. That's it this morning and off the press. Again, we'll be back tomorrow for more headline review. My name is Felicity Ezewike. Take care.